we gather in the name of God, who is creator, redeemer, and abiding spirit. Amen. Friends, the Lord be with you. Welcome to this service of Holy Communion of Eucharist. My name is Philip Hawthorne. I'm the rector of this church, St Stephen's Lansdowne, and also St Mary's Chalcombe. And you are very welcome to this benefice. Wherever you're watching, whenever you're watching, God unites us by the Holy Spirit. This is the last week that we will have to record a service purely uh, and not have a service in church. Next week we'll be back in our church buildings again, but do be assured that there will be a recorded service every week as well. You might like to get some bread and wine ready for when we have communion. I'll take communion on behalf of everybody, but if you'd like to have some with you as well, then please do that if you'd like to share in that way. I've had a bit of a week this week, and for all sorts of reasons, it's not been possible to involve the church folk in the service as we normally do, nor have the amount of editing that we normally have. So this will be a smaller, simpler, and more reflective service. But I think that's, that's appropriate for Advent. There is no liturgy for you to download, no booklet that you can hold in your hand. Many of the words that you need to say in the service will be presented for you on the screen. And there'll be shorter phrases as well, like the opening ones that may well be familiar to you, that you can join in with if you'd like to. And if you don't know them, then it won't matter. The prayers, when we come to them, will be written for you to read rather than listen to. And I hope all of these things mean that you can be fully present in the worship that we are sharing together as we spend this precious Advent Sunday together. Thanks as usual to Lizzie for filming and also for Andrew for editing. Advent is about watching and waiting for Christ's coming. And that's what we do today in our service. But it's not about an easy, comfortable impatience. Advent, like winter itself, brings a bearing, an honesty. Just as the trees outside are stripped bare of leaves, so is the church of flowers and the liturgy of the Gloria and the Alleluias. And the same goes for us too we can reflect on the year that we've just had, what a year it's been, and on ourselves too, with all the honesty and hope that we can. So let's begin with a great Advent hymn. If I had my way, we would have this every week up till Christmas. Let's share this together.
wonderful. Some words from our gospel today. But about that day or hour no one knows, neither the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. Beware, keep alert, for you do not know when the time will come. My dear sisters and brothers, in Advent, the Church bids us prepare to celebrate the coming of Christ, a coming that we recall in the child of Bethlehem, a coming that we experience in the gift of his Spirit, in the bread of communion, in the joy of human lives that are shared, a coming we wait for when God makes all things new in Christ. Let us leave behind the darkness of sin, walk in the light that shines on our path, and renew within ourselves the hope of glory to which God beckons us. So a moment of stillness as we prepare ourselves. And into this holy space, which is within us and between us, wherever we are, we pray together, Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Instead of one sermon today, I'm going to give short, four short reflections. And they're all based on a poem by Rowan Williams called Advent Calendar. As we wait for the coming of Christ, we look with eyes and hearts that already know the story, the story that, of the journey that Christ takes on earth. There are four verses and each one contains a foretaste of his passion, love, passion, pain, waiting and hoping are all in this poem. He will come like last leaves fall, one night when the November wind has flayed the trees to the bone and earth wakes choking on the mould, the soft shrouds folding. Here is the onset of winter. I love winter trees, how the space between the branches grows as the leaves fall and introduces more light. But in this poem, there are inklings of the pain to come. Maybe you can spot them. For trees don't just lose their leaves, but are flayed to the bone a reminder of the flogging Christ received. And those words for the leaf mould, soft and folding. Not a warm blanket here, but a shroud. Winter is a time of dying. The hymn that we shared together, maybe you sung it in your home, contains wonderful promises and hope. O come, O come, Emmanuel, redeem us. Glorious words, but all set in a minor key. To immerse ourselves in Advent is to allow ourselves to be flayed, like the grain of wheat, to die to ourselves, to be buried, and to trust in the new life to come. But for now, we can trust, that we can reflect, that we can be ourselves, because God is loving and faithful and trustworthy. We can give in to the easy fast forward to love's victory, or we can enter the other side of love its vulnerability, its fragility. Such a journey 
is the essence of what it is to be human. And as we journey with Christ, then we journey with his humanity. So in the darkness, we remind ourselves of light. And we light the first of our Advent candles. God our Father, your love is revealed to us in Jesus Christ. Help us in preparing to celebrate his birth, to make our hearts ready for your Holy Spirit, to make a home among us. We ask this through Jesus Christ, the light who is coming into the world. Amen. So the second stanza of Rowan Williams' poem. He will come like frost, one morning when the shrinking earth opens on mist, to find itself arrested in the net of alien, sword-set beauty. Again, we start with apparent beauty, frost, is so beautiful. If you ever look at it closely, especially a hard frost, really closely, it is otherworldly. But again, the poem takes us to a darker place. Frost on leaves actually shrinks them. And we too, in our waiting, may shrink from the surface glitter and choose to allow ourselves to strip back the superficial, to journey inside and find what is hidden there by our busyness, the noise and the demands of life. In Advent, we might find ourselves torn. Yes, there is the beauty and the excitement of Christmas and there's plenty to remind us of that. But there is also the chance to be still and to listen, to wait, maybe to spend some time with a single flame. In his passion, Jesus is arrested and there is a sword. The net of betrayal and deceit tightens around him. We are deceived if we constantly live in the rush and the busyness of life, if we listen to what the world tells us. Be still and know that God is there. A candle flame is even brighter when it shines in darkness. Do not be afraid, but wait and listen. You can hear frost thawing. We're going to hear our gospel reading now. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. But in those days, after that suffering, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light and the stars will be falling from heaven, and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with great power and glory. Then he will send out angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. From the fig tree, learn its lesson. As soon as its branch becomes tender and puts forth its leaves, you know that the summer is near. So also, when you see these things taking place, you know that he is near at the very gates. Truly, I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, 
but my words will not pass away. But about that day or hour no one knows, neither the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. Beware, keep alert, for you do not know when the time will come. It is like a man going on a journey, when he leaves home and puts his slaves in charge, each with his work, and commands the doorkeeper to be on the watch. Therefore keep awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening, or at midnight, or at cockcrow, or at dawn, or else he may find you asleep when he comes suddenly. And what I say to you, I say to all, keep awake. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. So we hear our third stanza. He will come like dark. One evening when the bursting red December sun draws up the sheet and penny masks its eye to yield the star-snowed fields of sky. The sun setting, blood red. The silence of the moment when the day is done. Before Christ will rise and Christ will come again, Christ will die. Bursting with red. The shroud pulled up over his broken body and darkness descends. We live in the time after resurrection, in the victory of love over death. The truth of life is that most things that are good in their making or their being formed are not without struggle. The times when you want to give up, the times of despair and hopelessness. The fragility of failure, the road less travelled, are part may be an essential part of the goodness, beauty and truth of what is made. So with love, as we wait for the coming of Christ, we wait for the coming of love. In our clergy retreat throughout the diocese, which was of course a Zoom event, one of the speakers, uh, a priest, spoke about what he said was the most profound moment in his 30 years of ministry. It happened a few years back that he was called at 10 o'clock one Christmas Eve morning. Not a good sign. It was the psychiatric unit in his parish. A teenage girl had been admitted in a fragile mental state and had asked to see a priest. He went in and was led to an armchair where the girl was curled up under a blanket. He admitted that his mind was full of all the things that he had to do that day. The crib service, the food parcels, the Christingle, the carols, the midnight mass. He spoke to the girl and reassured her, chatted about all the hope of Christmas and hoped that it would help. And she listened. When the speaking stopped, an awkward silence fell. At least, he said, it was awkward for him. And suddenly the girl reached out and gently took hold of his hand, resting hers and his on the arm of her chair. Then she said simply, wait with me. And for the next, however long, they waited. And he said it was the most profound moment of any Christmas. They weren't waiting for anything. They were just waiting. When the words have finished, when our questions have been asked, when our doubts and our fears have been allowed their time, there, here, in Advent, is the waiting. 
the waiting. In the waiting stillness is everything that we need. We're going to say some words of penitence now. And you are asked just to respond to the promptings. When the Lord comes, he will bring to light the things now hidden in darkness and will disco disclose the purposes of the heart. Therefore, in the light of Christ, let us confess our sins and the sins of the world. Lord, you bring our fear into the light of love, but so often we prefer to stay asleep in the shadows. We say, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Your coming promises hope and healing for the earth. Yet we turn our backs on our living planet and its peoples. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You come near in the vulnerable. We choose to worship idols of wealth, power and celebrity and see only our own needs. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. God of eternal mercy, forgive you your sins, strengthen you in all goodness, keep you in all truth, and remould you in all beauty in Jesus Christ, the coming Messiah. Amen. So our last stanza of Rowan Williams' poem. He will come, will come, will come like crying in the night, like blood, like breaking, as the earth writhes to toss him free, he will come like child. Even the greatest human moment in history, Christ's resurrection, was the tomb tossing Christ free of death and not without its childbirth agony and writhing. He will come, he will come, and so in Advent, we hold our uncertainty and our fear, the failures that shout at us, the regrets that gnaw at us, the resentments that diminish us. We hold them as a small flame in the darkness. The hope of Christ comes when we let go the expectations of the world and of our demanding minds and allow the rebirth of our humanity. For then we are truly born as Christ was, the vulnerable, the fragile, the loved, the beloved. He will come like child. So we affirm our faith in Jesus Christ, for whom we wait. Though he was divine, he did not cling to being with God, but made himself nothing, taking the form of a baby. He was born in human vulnerability. He humbled himself and was obedient to death. Therefore God has raised him on high, and given him the name above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, and every voice proclaim that Jesus Christ is Lord, 
to the glory of God the Father. Amen. So we come to our prayers of intercessions. And as I said, the prayers are going to be written and presented for you to read. So just allow the words to rest with you. And then you can insert your own into the silence when that comes. You can bring your own prayers into the prayers of everyone. Let's pray together. Jesus stood with his disciples in the locked room 
and said, peace be with you. Then he breathed on them and said, receive my spirit. Dear friends, the peace of the Lord be always with you. Look upon us in mercy, not in judgment. Draw us from hatred to love. Make the frailty of our praise a dwelling place for your glory. Amen. Friends, the Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is always right to give you thanks, God, our Creator, loving and faithful, holy and strong. You made us and the whole universe and filled your world with life. You sent your Son to live among us, Jesus our Saviour, Mary's child. He suffered on the cross, died to save us from sin and rose in glory from the dead. You send your Spirit to bring new life to the world and clothe us with power from on high. And so we join the angels to celebrate and say together, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Holy God, on the night before he died, Jesus shared a meal with his friends. He took the bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After the meal, Jesus took the cup of wine and again he thanked you. He gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Father, as we bring this bread and wine, and remember his death and resurrection, send your Holy Spirit, that we who share these gifts may be fed by Christ's body and his blood. Pour your Spirit on us, that we may love one another. Work for the healing of the earth, and share the good news of Jesus as we await for his coming in glory. For honour and praise belong to you, Holy God, with Jesus, for whom we wait, and the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. So let us pray with confidence the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. So draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood, which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that Christ died and now lives for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith, with thanksgiving. Body of Christ.
the blood of Christ. The body of Christ. Please respond to each line with, we thank you for feeding us with yourself, God of life. We thank you for the life you give us, risen Lord Jesus. We thank you that we are broken to feed the world, abiding Holy Spirit, we thank you. Now may the God who brings heaven close to earth give truth to our judgment and flame to our longing that our hearts might be ready to be born again in love and the blessing of God Almighty, creator, redeemer and abiding spirit be with you and remain with you and all you love, pray for, miss and remember in this moment and for always. Amen. A few notices. Uh, don't forget all details are on the St Stephen's website. Advent begins on Tuesday, uh, but our Advent course begins on Monday. So at Monday at 7.30pm and on Tuesdays at half past one for an hour. And the course is about prayer. And it's not just telling you how to do things from experts. It's a discussion of how we pray more effectively. Lord, teach us to pray is the theme of that course. So that's the prayer course and you can find out details of the Zoom link on the website. Advent Windows begins on Ensley and in Lansdowne on Tuesday. A night, every night a new window will be lit up. Uh, going right the way up to Christmas Day itself, and then they'll be lit way beyond that. So do keep a lookout for those. And we also have Advent bags for families, um, a, a bag with a candle in it and some prayers, some, uh, a simple thing to do each day together, uh, and also a book and lots of different things, but they're all available uh, from the rectory or from the church. Please look on the website to find out where, how you can get those. As I said, we gather next Sunday in our churches at St Stephen's here and also at St Mary's where the first half of the alphabet will be able to go to that service at Chalcombe. There will be a recorded Eucharist as well so if you can't go to uh, St Mary's that day you'll still be able to watch or if you don't feel that it's right for you to come to church at the moment then there'll be something for you, uh, a, an act of worship for you to take part in. Now we know what our Prime Minister and the government have said that we can do at Christmas, we can uh, talk about letting you know the plans that we have for our Christmas services now. One thing we reflected on as we've been talking this week as churches in Bath is that through the pandemic, uh, we've done things differently, but often that difference has had unforeseen blessings. And we've got some great ideas for how we share Christmas together and celebrate this year, and we're looking forward to sharing them with you, uh, and also about uh, news of our charities that we'll be given to, giving to as well this year. So please listen out for those. We will share another great Advent hymn together now.
can't hide the fact that Advent is my favourite season of the whole year. So even though it's a, a, a sparse time uh, and a gentle time, there's a, there are some wonderful things to be gained from it as well as we journey towards Christmas. One of the things we'll be talking about in our uh, news alerts and in the prayer course is giving 10 minutes a day, even if you just sit with a candle for 10 minutes and just be still, something different for Advent. And we'll be giving other ideas of how you can spend that 10 minutes as we go through Advent towards Christmas. So, as we await our coming Saviour, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.